to be on time. Um, if you are joining us uh, a little bit later, please make sure to check out the recording because we have a lot of content today. So we want to make sure we get through it. So uh, my name is Danny, uh, Miss Danny, and I work with Girls Inc. of Tarrant County. Uh, today we will be having a great guest speaker talk to us about building your brand. So before we start off and get down to making tacos and talking about it, we do have a little bit of rules, so I'm going to turn it over to Miss Steph. So welcome to Taco Tuesday. So the rules um, today are the same as in the past weeks, but we like to go over them each week. Um, so just make sure that if you are not speaking, that you are on mute. And also, um, what you say on the podcast and what you say on the video um, will be shared um, on YouTube. So just be mindful of that. If you, This is a sp safe space, though. Um, however, if you share something and it's harmful to yourself or to others, we are all mandated reporters and so we do have to report that. So just be mindful of that. Um, when it comes to questions, Kanai is um, in the chat box looking at those. So just if you have a question, just type it in there and then at the end of, um, end of the session, we will answer those questions. Did you say that Oh, sorry. And also for attendance, if you will message Kanai directly in the chat box for attendance. And if you're tuning into this afterwards, please leave a comment on YouTube or Instagram. Awesome. So now we will just do a couple staff introductions just to refresh y'all on who we are. Um, I am Jay Boss, Program Director uh, for Fort Worth ISD. I'm Stephanie Swenson, and I'm the Outreach Coordinator for Girls, Inc. My name is Danira Garcia, and I'm the Program Director for Northside and Diamond Hill in Fort Worth. And I'm Chana Worley. I'm the Program Director for Crowley. Awesome. Um, so today, I have the honor of introducing our guest speaker, Naomi Morado. She is actually uh, a Texan and, and native Fort Worthian, but she's going to tell us a little bit about herself, where she is now, what she does, and how she got there. So Naomi. Thanks for that introduction, Danny. I'll just wait for the slide to come up and then I will dive right in. Um, so let's just get perfect. Okay. Cool. So as uh, Daenerys said, my name is Naomi Murado. And first off, I just want to thank all of you for letting me be here today and being part of this wonderful group and activity. Um, just speaking and engaging with young women is something that I'm very excited and passionate about. So passionate about. So it really is my honor to be here with you. Um, as Daenerys mentioned, a little bit about my background. I'm actually born and raised uh, in Fort Worth, Texas. I grew up in Diamond Hill, so um, that area is very near and dear to my heart. Thank you, Naomi. Um, so, yes, like she said, you can ask her questions at the end. But now we're going to do an icebreaker, a little fun icebreaker. Um, we're going to ask you to name three adjectives you would like to be known as. So mine are a positive, reliable, and witty. Mine are detailed, trustworthy, and personable. Three adjectives I'd like to be known as is confident, outspoken, and authentic. My three adjectives are outgoing, driven, and funny. So you all that are on the screen, uh, if you can type in the chat box or if you're comfortable sharing out loud, let us know what three adjectives you'd like to be known as. These three adjectives that you share, type in the chat box, are going to be what we want you to keep in mind today as we're talking about building your brand. Right, so I have one on the chat box that says trustworthy. One of mine. So I agree with, with that one. I feel like being trustworthy 
um, in a workplace is important and gossip should not enter the workplace. I think um, your workplace should be a safe and professional space. So Fair enough. And another one we have is unapologetic, um, servant leader and big hearted. I love it. Always important to make sure you have a good heart. I love big hearted. That's a good one. Awesome. I like that. That's definitely a boss somebody wants to be around, right? All right, well, while y'all continue to think of those, y'all can continue to type them in the chat box. We're gonna go ahead and move forward and talk about building your brand. Uh, so before we get deep down into building our taco, building our brand, we wanna talk to you a little bit about what is building your brand and why it's important. So building your brand refers to your brand identity or who you are. It's the thing about you that makes you um, distinct and memorable to people. And your brand is also a way that you communicate uh, with the world and differentiate, differentiate, okay, to make yours unique <laughs> to everyone's and to make it stand out because everyone might have the same brand, but yours need to stand out to, from everyone. Yeah, your brand is also your identity, so your name. Um, it is an outward expression of yourself and even your visual appearance. Your brand identity is super important because it is the thing that speaks to people when you first encounter them. Um, also, a lot of times people might not meet you in person, but they will see your social media accounts. And when they're on your social media accounts, they can get a feel for what your brand is that way as well. Uh, so Naomi, can you tell us a little bit about how you built a brand for yourself? Yeah, absolutely. And so I actually wasn't um, as ahead of the curve as everyone on this call is today. So I came into this sort of exercise a little later uh, in my... Can you, me? Yeah. Um, you guys hear me? I can hear you. Can y'all not? Can y'all hear her? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. It's just, um, I think the groups. Uh oh, group. Jasmine, <laughs> Jasmine, Stephanie, they might be frozen. We can hear you. Okay. Uh oh. But if, but if everyone else can hear me, is it okay if I just keep on going? Yeah, that's fine. Cool. So um, I wasn't as ahead of the game as a lot of, of you on the call today. So my process and how I thought about building my brand is, is a lot more workplace related, but as they were mentioning, it's something that you think about all the time, whether it's about yourself personally um, and how you interact with your friends and family or how you are at work. So um, the way I thought about building my brand was really more thinking about who it was that I admired uh, first, like as the first step, who was it that I looked up to that I wanted to kind of embody and, and see myself as. Um, and one of my managers early on in my career gave me a really, really great piece of advice to get me started on this, which was, what are the things that you want people to say about you when you're not in the room or when they're making decisions about something and you come up, what is it that you want them to say? So I have right next to me here a notebook with a page from 2017. Um, where I sat down and I wrote down all the things that were happening in my life, like where I was working, what I was doing, what I really aspired to be. Um, and I wrote down, just like you did in the icebreaker, three goals that I had or three adjectives um, that I had for myself that I really wanted to embody. Um, and so that's really what got me started on this is really thinking about who do I want to be when I'm not in the room. Awesome. Thank you, Naomi. Naomi. I'm sorry if I mispronounced that. <laughs> That's a great way to put it. So we have broken um, our conversation down in four steps to make it a little bit easier. So step one is to write it down, just like Naomi said. So uh, today we're building tacos. So that means making a recipe um, for what you want your brand to be, right? So whenever you write out your ingredients and your recipe you want to think about what is my vision and then you want to think about what you want to add it in it, add in it and what it means so uh today um we want to talk a little bit about uh, naomi what was your vision of yourself you said a little bit about what people say when you leave the room 
um, and maybe just speak more about your, your personal vision of yourself, and then we will go into actually making tacos. Step two. Yeah, so what kind of what I had in my mind as I was thinking about this for myself and what I wanted my brand to be um, after kind of looking at the people that I really uh, admired and looked up to, the common thread between all of them was always that they were very strong women. Uh, so that's a very broad vision to have for yourself, but I think it's a really, it was at least a really good starting point for me to know that, okay, I just, I want to be known as a really strong independent woman. And I know that probably sounds a little cliche, but it really is kind of what drives me day to day when I'm thinking about what I'm doing and how I'm living my life and if I'm making the right choices. Uh, so that is really how I started to think about what is it that I want my personal brand to be um, at like a really big picture level. I love it. Awesome. So We've talked about step one as writing it out, setting your attention, figuring out your recipe for your brand. And then we're moving on to step two, which is putting step one into action. So after you have written it all out, um, how do we start to accomplish the things that you've, um, that you've written down? So uh, Naomi, can you tell us what kind of components um, or actions it took to, to accomplish your vision? Yeah, sure. So I actually realized I did not tell you my three things that I wrote down in 2017. Um, again, mine are probably going to be a little different than um, all of you on the call today because mine are more work oriented and they don't always have to be. But mine were strategic, analytical, and a good communicator. And at this point in my life, back in 2017, um, let's take good communicator, for example. I probably wasn't going to go to sleep one night and then wake up the next day being Michelle Obama and so eloquently and beautifully you know, addressing a nation. Uh, so I really thought about my actions to be, in this example, a good communicator, things that I could actually control and do and put into practice. Even if it was something little, like I wrote down here, um, that verbatim, it says, I will download a word app that will allow me to expand my vocabulary. I will review these words daily to expand my vocabulary. And that's funny that I repeat myself because there you can also see like, okay, I really do need to expand my vocabulary. Um, and that's what I did. I downloaded a simple word of the day app and I just started, you know, learning new words. And then I got started on the very next page. Again, you can't really see on the very next page. I wrote down the word that I was learning that day, the definition, how I would use it. So really small things um, that help you move forward, even if it's little things. Uh, and that's really how I thought about the actions that I could take to get me to build my brand. Awesome, thank you. So now we're actually going to get into those steps. So building our brand, or for us, um, we're actually going to be building our own tacos. So we invite you, if you would like to, to build your own brand, aka your own taco with us. But I'm going to kind of share um, the first two ingredients that we have are, are soft taco and hard taco. So soft taco can be a corn tortilla or a flour tortilla. Um, and soft taco is, for us, we, we um, identified it as reserved, flexible, go with the flow. Um, it's not as stern as a hard taco. Um, and then for hard taco, we said decisive, serious, maybe you're more assertive, more certain about things. And we also put stern on there. So for me personally, um, the first step, and this is kind of your, the first step in your brand. So this is my first step. So I actually am going to have on my taco, I will have a hard shell and a soft shell, and I'm going to make what is called a double decker. So basically, you put, I broke it, but <laughs> <laughs> you put, that's, that's fine. You put the hard shell inside of the soft shell. And I feel like this really kind of describes me well, because I think, I think on the outside, I try to be this like assertive and in control all the time, but then like my heart is very soft and I'm a very emotional person if you really get to know me. So I felt for me personally, I needed that soft shell and that hard shell to really balance, balance me out. And uh, for me and my brand, I chose a soft taco shell. 
Um, I, I'm pretty flexible and go with the flow. Uh, I think I do my best work, my best everything, get kind of spur of the moment, go with the flow type of, type of thing. So I have chosen a soft topic, flexible. I love it. And just to say a disclaimer, uh, we all put our ingredients and hand sanitize um, before this started, so we wouldn't take up time doing that. So, um, but I actually chose a hard show. Um, and the reason why I did this is because I like to keep my word. Um, I like people to re be able to rely on me when I say I'm going to do something that I actually do it. Um, also, if I tell them I'm, I'm going to meet up with them, I want to actually do it. Um, now, if you know anything about hard shells is that they can also get soggy. And when they get soggy, they become flexible. So sometimes if, you know, I feel like a tug on my heart, then I might be a little bit more flexible um, with my time and maybe talk about doing something a little bit different. And I chose a little bit different. I just put uh, tortilla chips. The reason why I chose that is because um, in my brand, I don't think every time you need to be soft or hard. I sometimes like to switch it up just depending on what it is part of my brand. So that's why I chose that. Okay. So, you know, after you've chosen the type of shell um, that you are, you always think about what you're going to fill it with. So our next part of building our taco is our, uh, is our filling, our meats and our beans. Um, and these are the things that we think about what, what are we filling our time with? Um, who are we surrounding ourselves with? And also our beans and our meat is usually the support um, of the taco. It's like one of the main things in the taco. So for me and building my brand, I have chosen refried beans to include in my taco. And, um, you know, I think about my support and my friends and my team um, as my, my core and what helps me to keep forward with building my brand. I like it. Um, I have some brown turkey meat here. Um, and this is, represents some of the mentors that I have in my life. I still like to meet with mentors or supervisors because I think there is always room for growth. And if you fill yourself um, with some people that you want to be like, um, they will inspire you and, and help you work harder. And then I also put um, meat and a little bit of rice because also what uh, Danny said, I like my, my mentors, I still talk to them and they help me um, better my brand. But then also rice, I like a variety of people um, with different flavors because they give me a, a site that I haven't seen, so. So I picked, um, so I, like I said, I have both. So I picked beans because that to me was the glue that's going to hold my soft shell to my hard shell. Um, and I really, recognize that as kind of what Jay was saying about like my support, my friends, my family, like they're my glue. Um, they're the people I turn to um, in hard times and in good times, but I, I really needed that to hold them together. So beans for me. Very nice. So I also put some beans in there, but if I talk to you guys about my family, it'll be endless. So um, <laughs> We also have some veggies and some cheese here. So your veggies, they add a little bit of flavor. Uh, this we like to think of what we advocate for, what we are passionate about, what we spend our time sharing awareness about. Maybe someone was impacted in our life by something and we want to spread awareness about it. Um, and then the cheese, those are going to be a little sprinkles of joys we get. And those are our hobbies. So after sharing awareness, then we have to think about what do I like to do and what do I want to develop? So what are those skills that I want to develop but are actually fun and don't feel like work? So for me, my cheese are, that's volleyball. I love to play volleyball. I've been playing since I was 11 and um, I love being a team player as well. But also the veggies, so I did get some lettuce and some tomato in here. Those are the things that I'm passionate about and that's why I work for Girls Inc. I'm passionate about giving girls opportunities uh, that they haven't experienced before and helping them realize how much they're worth and how great they are and seeing them succeed. So that's that. All right, well, great way to put it, Danny. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'm gonna piggyback off of what she said. Um, yes, uh, my cheese is also volleyball. I love volleyball too. Um, I like to travel and I love to do hair. So that's some things that I love to do on my own time and doesn't feel like work. Uh, but it also helps uh, with my sour cream, I'm sorry, my veggies is also working with Girls Inc. And um, 
with hair and everything, speaking to them about things that I know that they don't usually get. So I just love um, putting those two together. And then for me, I put um, cheese on mine because I, I wrote down self-care. I really like like on my weekends and when I'm not working, like I like to spend time with friends, but also like taking care of myself, walking my dog, things like that. So I put cheese on mine. No veggies. No veggies. <laughs> Not because I don't like to advocate, but I don't like vegetables. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. So for me, um, uh, my cheese or, or my hobbies, uh, my self-care is probably poetry. Um, I like to write poetry. I've been slacking lately, but um, I still love it. Um, art, um, binging on Netflix shows on the weekend is perfect self-care for me. So those are the things. And as far as my vegetables, uh, I just have lettuce and I think about like my social media platform. Like I am a social justice advocate, um, you know, as well as with Girls Inc. I advocate for the girls that um, I work with. I advocate on social media and things like that. So that that's my lettuce and that's my cheese. That's the core like of who I am. So. so next we have sour cream and guacamole. So sour cream are those things that you know about yourself. You might love them about yourself, but maybe other people aren't as fond of those things about you, but, or maybe other people are like, oh, you should change that about yourself. But you know that that is part of your brand and that is part of who you are. And basically um, you're going to continue to um, advocate for yourself with those things, even if, even if other people aren't accepting of them. Um, and guacamole is pretty similar. So things that other people don't necessarily like about you, um, but you have come to accept those things. So they're part of who you are. You, maybe you can't change those things, right? So you have learned to live with them, embrace them, um, and so that's, that's what guacamole represents. So for me, I put sour cream um, because I think I, I know I am, I'm sarcastic a lot and, and people either really like that about me or they really don't know how to vibe with that or understand. Um, but I'm 90% of what comes out of my mouth is sarcastic. So that is my sour cream. Um, and then guacamole, I think for me, um, some things that I've learned to embrace about myself is having, um, I think earlier I said like I'm assertive and sometimes that doesn't always pay off and learning when to be assertive and learning when to like back off. So that's my guacamole. All right. And um, I've chosen guacamole um, as the thing that I've embraced. Um, it's probably my voice. Um, <laughs> I, I've been told growing up, you know, you don't have to speak to every issue and things like that. But I also feel like when things are very passionate for me, then my voice is my way of speaking to it, calling it out. Uh, you know, I, I've had to tame myself on Facebook and Instagram and social media as being an advocate that I am in saying too much to people or just not spending that energy. But I also love that about myself because I know that I'm not afraid to speak up. So that's definitely my guacamole and things that sometimes people don't like about me. I love it. All right, my thing, uh, I'm clumsy. So I'm just gonna put a lot of that on there. I'm very clumsy. Um, and sometimes I will speak and it's, it's coming out right in my head, but not verbally. So I feel like that is something that I've learned to embrace. I break a lot of things. I bump into a lot of things and even ask a lot of questions. But sometimes I feel like that helps people uh, be more relatable. And it's a little bit inviting when I can actually laugh at myself and be embarrassed, uh, but still have a serious conversation after. Right. And mine is, I just decided to choose sour cream. Uh, one of my things that I need to work on is probably being more organized. And I heard a lot of people on this, you know, that are organized. So that's why I put sour cream. But I also like to be around people that help me with that. And our last one, our sauces, our queso or salsa. Person, they uh, represent personality, what you bring to the brand, spicy, mild, out, um, out there, but not too much, or maybe you are reserved. Um, my sauce would probably be queso. I'm very in your face. Uh, everything I do is big personality, and that could be a guacamole too. But uh, anyways, <laughs> it's, it, I'm queso. 
So for my sauces, I put um, queso and salsa, and I would say I'm spicy. Um, I'm out there. I like to speak my mind. I talk a lot. I probably talk too much, but um, yeah, I would say queso and salsa because I'm, I'm out there. I'm gonna follow Steph's lead and I'm, I'm queso and salsa as well. Uh, if you know me, we, when people first meet me, I'm pretty quiet and introverted and, you know, but I'm also quite spicy, quite, um, what's the word? Spunky, I guess, in a sense, but I'm also pretty calm and chill, so both. Yeah, I'm gonna go with both too. I like my queso, but that's just because I'm a softy. Like if something happens to someone or I watch a movie and they're crying, I'm crying. <laughs> uh, I just, I don't know, I call myself Baby Yoda, you know, the Baby Yoda face. Uh, but even then, the, the little spice in me is that I like to also stand up for um, the people that I care about. So if I see that somebody's being bullied or mistreated, I, I like to speak up and that's when I can get a little spicy. All right. Three. All right, so Kanai is going to, um, we're all wearing masks, so we are staying in regulation. Um, so Kanai is going to come on the screen now and she is going to take a bite out of her taco. Um, step three is, is reflection, so Kanai. Well, hello there. So y'all described y'all's tacos. I'm not going to get into too much detail about this tell, lovely taco. Tell us taco what you got. Yeah, I have here. Um, just a chicken taco, a little avocado, a little lettuce. You know, if y'all follow me on IG, I posted this. But the main thing about my taco is I made it with love. And I feel like yes. that's what I try to do everything with. So I'm not going to go into like each detail, but it's made with love and yumminess. So now I will take a bite. Don't mind me, you know, I'm just going to go in real fast. <laughs> Woo, so jealous. Yeah. <laughs> so how was that? So in our step three, our step three is our reflections of our step one and two. So our reflection of us writing it out, setting our signatures, our inflections of all the actions we put into our step. And so now that Kanai has taken a bite, how how is that uh, for you, Kanai? Great. And I can <laughs> actually taste the love. It's wonderful. <laughs> nice. Reflecting back on all the things we added to it. It's like y'all tacos, if you could eat it, it's great. Awesome. So, cool. so now we want to ask Naomi really quick before we move on to step four, what about your reflection? So I know you set your adjectives in 2017, but as you've reflected over the years, what are some things that have maybe stayed the same? What has changed? Can you tell us a little bit about your reflections? Yeah, and, um, and and I love that you you call out that I did write these back in 2017 because I have had quite a while to reflect on what I originally wrote. And again, these are very professional focused, but something that I have reflected on since then is um, kind of how now I am being able to focus more, not just on these like basic big words that I wrote in 2017, but reflect and to see what's missing, which professionally I've um, also been a victim of not being very organized. <laughs> so I, uh, I struggle with that a lot. And it's something that I have to be very intentional um, in doing every day. Even I struggle with even like having an organized email inbox or my files that I save. So even doing little things like making sure that I actually read all the emails versus just clicking them. So they are on, don't have the notification. Um, little things like that that I've reflected on that has come up as a need because my work sometimes suffers because of how unorganized I am. Um, and on the personal side, because I feel like I have for so long focused so much on building my professional brand, I have found that my personal brand, like how I am with those that I interact day to day that aren't necessarily work connected or related, my friends and family, I started to notice different qualities that I admired in those who were closest to me. A big one that comes to mind is, um, I have one specific friend, she is one of my best friends, um, who is very thoughtful. And everyone knows her as like being incredibly thoughtful and considerate. And so that's another in reflecting, like, who do I want to be and who do I want to grow into um, that I've added to my set of adjectives is like, what can I do uh, to really embody thoughtfulness in every single thing um, that I do day to day? Thank you, Naomi. So now we're going to move on to step four. And so 
Step four is refining our goals, refining our tacos. So what else does it need? What maybe was it missing? Um, so before I ask Naomi my question, I want to jump back to Kanai. Kanai, after you took a bite out of your taco, was there anything, you felt the love when you took that bite, but was there anything you thought, oh, maybe it should have had uh, tomatoes or lettuce or something else just to add a little oomph to your taco? Yeah, it needed a little bit more salsa or maybe some queso because I didn't have queso. So like a little mm. bit more oomph, a little more personality, a little salsa to make it a little more out there. Mm. So yeah, a little I bit love extra. That. Thanks for sharing. So for Naomi, how did you refine your goals? So we talked about reflecting on them, but then once you reflected, how were you able, how are you able to go back and refine, change your goals? Yeah, and I, I feel like maybe I got my steps flipped here. So sorry, I probably spoke to better refining before, um, but in reflecting and refining, yeah, it really is also thinking about how um, in a work setting, you often get feedback, um, maybe not so much like from your friends, but in a work setting, you do get um, formal feedback on your performance and how you're doing and engaging with your colleagues at excuse me. And that is something um, that a tool that I've used to really refine my brand is okay, in this formal feedback channel, what are my colleagues and my teammates saying about me? And how can I use that to better refine how I show up at work every day and how I show up in, in my home and in my personal life every day? Thank you. So for step four, that's our last step. And I, I wrote this out. And this is part of my funniness, but I want to just tell everyone, um, in reflecting and refining, don't ever bite off more than you can chew um, of your own brand or of your taco. And yeah, and it's important to remember that just because you set these three adjectives today doesn't mean that in a week, a month, a year, you can't change those, right? We're always evolving. We're always growing. We're always changing. And so it's really important that you take time to reflect and you take time to refine those goals. And if it does get to be too much, like that's okay. Just take a step back and, and kind of even going back to square one of like, what is my recipe? What was my original thought process when I started building my brand? So we have a little bit more time. Um, we're gonna turn it over to Kanai for chat box questions and then we will close. Yeah, comments and questions, Kanai. All right, so if anyone has any questions, just write them in the chat box and I'll read them out for you. Um, if you have any questions um, for Naomi or just any questions about anything we talked about, now is your chance you could write it in the chat box um, or even if you're comfortable, since we do have a little bit of time, you can just unmute yourself and just ask a question. Mm -hmm. All right, we have one. Um, it's for you, Naomi. Um, how would you suggest changing your old brand to a better one? That so is how would you suggest changing your old brand to a better one? Yeah, that's a really great question. And I, um, I just want to go back to what Stephanie just said and that like you're not ever tied to one thing or one set of adjectives that describes you. And even whenever you do write those down, a lot of things change, right? Your environments change, your circumstances change, and, and even who you are and what you value changes over time. So I don't know if it's necessarily dropping an old one and picking up a new one as much as it is thinking about what's important to you and what matters to you and, and what are the things um, that you can maybe say, oh, that's not as important to me anymore. Let me make this um, now a bigger part of my life. So it's always growing even in little ways um, and evolving with yourself and your surroundings and those uh, around you as well. All right, thank you. Any more questions? All right, we have one right here. And then like I said, you could write it in the chat box or just unmute yourself if you just wanted to say it. All right, so what steps would you suggest on being more assertive. So this is just a general question. So Naomi or any of the other girls at staff who are on here, um, just feel free to answer it. But um, um, what steps would you suggest to being more assertive? So 
So I'll speak to this since I talked about being assertive. Um, I think it's important to reflect um, on yourself. And I think assertiveness comes with confidence. So it's important to have confidence to be able to speak up and to be able to um, use your voice like Jay talked about. But it's also important to, there's a fine line um, between being assertive and being like controlling, I think. And so there's a fine line between those two. So it's important that we, Naomi spoke on this, like depending on your environment and who you're around, um, how you use that assertiveness, it's, it's never a bad thing, but it's just, it might change depending on the company that you're with or the environment that you're in. So I think first building your confidence and using your voice um, when, when you can and when, you know, we want you to, you, you want to be uncomfortable, but also in those safe spaces. So when you feel like people are listening to you, I think that's a good way to build your assertiveness as well. Anybody else? Yeah, I mean, I'll speak to that. Um, I think I have a hard time delegating. So I, I normally say yes to a lot of things. Um, and just being assertive is being able to say, I have another engagement or I already have plans. Um, a lot of times, sometimes I feel guilty and I'll say, oh, and then I give an explanation of what I was doing, but it doesn't require that. You can literally just say, I already have plans. Maybe we can do this at this time, or this is what I have free. Um, so just sticking to your no, but also being uh, respectful about it. Anyone else? Yes. Naomi, did you have any comments on that question on being assertive? Not to add, that was great. I'm going to take some pointers for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to add in something just like, like I love what y'all said, but it's also important. Like you can be assertive and be respectful. I feel like sometimes people feel like assertiveness is like, you got to be strong. You got to be like too assertive, but you know, it takes risk. If you give respect, you get respect. So I think it's also important just to learn to be assertive in a respectful way um, and just treat, you know, someone how you would want to be treated in any job or in, in, even any like life, you know, encounter. So. So we have some other questions. Um, so this is for Naomi and it is, is there anything you would change um, or regret in your business career? That is a really great question because I feel like it's something that a lot of people spend time thinking about like, oh, I wish I would have done this or I wish this would have happened. Um, but I am very much so the personality much like Jay, like flexible, go with the flow. Like this is what the universe has for me and, and I'm just going to make the best that I can. So I don't necessarily have any regrets, but I will say something that I wish I would have accepted sooner um, is the fact that you don't have to do things on your own. Uh, you, I feel like oftentimes um, in a business setting, it's easy, or even like in your everyday life, it's easy to say like, oh, this person has everything or this person, you know, lives the way that I want, but you don't um, realize that, that that a lot of the times that what we admire um, is not built off of somebody alone, but a community. So it's all, um, that's one thing I would say that I wish I would have had the courage to speak up more and more often for myself to let people know, like, I need help. Like, I really don't know what I'm doing right now because you don't have to have all the answers and nobody expects you to have all the answers. I think a lot of the time we put that on ourselves and I found myself doing that often in my career. And so that's one thing, again, not that I would regret, but I wish I would have um, been more comfortable doing sooner for sure. Is there anything anyone wants to say about like regrets or anything they would change? Nope, I think that was perfect. Yeah. All right, if not, we have some more questions. All right, um, so how many times do you predict your brand will shift this lifetime? Do you expect a lot will stay the same? So I'm assuming that might be for um, Naomi or just for all of us to answer. I think that, I think your brand is ever evolving. So yes, I think it will shift and change throughout my lifetime. Um, I'm going to be honest, I'm 26 and I don't really even know if I fully understand what my brand is, um, but I'm open to learning and growing and 
changing um, as I learn more and educate myself more on things that I'm passionate about. Agreed. Um, at 33 years old, I'm not the same person. I uh, don't have the same goals if I, that I had when I was 25, that I had when I was 15. I think there are some core things about us, some core values that will st stay the same and you will grow on those. But there, there's a lot about us that will change and shift and our goals and our desires um, and what we want to accomplish in life might change as we grow and get older and that's okay. I agree. Um, I think some of that meat and those beans, like they stay constant, like your family and friends. Um, so it's great to invest time in those relationships because one of the things that I like to say is the quality of your life is determined by the quality of your relationships. So the quality of your work life is going to be determined by how great of a relationship you have with your coworkers or your boss and vice versa. Even at home, you're going to want to come home if you have a great relationship with those who you live with or you are around with. Um, but aside from that, it's going to be changing. And some of those things may change develop, uh, depending on like those interests you develop um, and where you want to see yourself in, in the future years. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I agree with that. <laughs> <Shana agrees. laughs> All right. This one is a really good, 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 good question. And I'm being dramatic because it is very good. And I feel like every young person or every person who was, okay, anyway, let me just read the question. Okay, so what is it, what is one advice you would give your 18, 19 year old self? And this is for everyone. Um, so what is some advice you would give your 18 or 19 year old self? Naomi, you wanna go first? Ooh, this is a tough one, yeah. <clears throat> this is a great question. Um, and it's, it's a little tough because thinking back is always like, oh yeah, of course, like this is an advice I should, I should have had then, but it's really hard whenever you're, you know, 17, 18, 19, and, and trying to think about how big the world is and like everything that's out there in your world is, is everything you see every day. So I think one piece of advice that I would give myself at 18 or 19 years old is just like, there's definitely more, like there's, there's more to life than, high school and and your friends and and don't worry if things aren't ideal right now like you have that power and that energy within yourself to move forward and just know that that that's an option like you can definitely grow if um and the world is much bigger and there's so much to explore and be hungry for that exploration i think is definitely something that i would um give my 18 to 19 year old self I think for, I think for me, um, 18, 19, I would have told, or I would have told myself I'm stronger than I think I am. That would have been my advice to myself. I think I would tell myself, um, don't be afraid to just be you, you know, and not worry about living up to other people's expectations and goals and desires that they have for your life. Um, and to follow your own dreams. Yeah, I think an advice I give myself is be curious. Uh, somebody once told me join like five different clubs, maybe one you're really passionate about, something you don't know anything about, and some that you think you might go to. Um, and I've met some great people through that. And even if I was not very good at yoga, um, I had some great experiences from trying those things out. So just being curious and, and taking the step to, to, to do some of those things. Are you curious about? Yeah, um, I kind of going to switch this around. Um, there's an advice that I got when I was 18, and it was follow your mind and not your circumstances. And I really like that one because I've always been a thinker. I've always like thought about so many things, but my circumstances is I didn't have that much money. So with her saying that, I would find I'd go to a thrift store and find like old clothes and sew new clothes. So when what I'm trying to say is. Think beyond where you are at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't have to be college, not those type of thoughts, but think about what you have at this moment and what you can do with it. Uh, everybody might not like it, but as long as you love it, it will come, it will be a product that will sell. Mm -hmm. So that's, that was advice that I got at 18 and I still live by it and it's helped me. And I think it would help all young people. Yes. Mm -hmm. I would just say to stay focused and like not worry about the outside surroundings 
Um, stay focused on your goals, no matter what your friends are saying, if they're trying to distract you or whatever the case may be, um, because it's just very important to make sure, you know, and you can, you know, have fun and do other things, but just make sure you stay focused and know what the end goal is. So that's what I would tell my 18 year old self. All right, questions. All right, can I, are there any more questions? Any more questions? Let me make sure I got all of them in the chat box. And if you have any new questions or just anything you want to say, type it in. Um, is there any comments for us? Got about five minutes. That this is therapy and that everyone needed this. So yeah. that's Aww. the main, you know, thing. Everyone's just feeling good and like what's going on. But we don't have um, any more questions. All right, well, I will do the closing. And first and foremost, thank you so much to Naomi for coming on and being a part of our podcast session, YouTube channel. We're very appreciative of your knowledge and your willingness to be on this call today and share with us. Um, I got a lot of great things from you that I will carry with me. So thank you so much. Um, also, we are going to send out a survey. We'll send it through email and then also we'll put it in the link on YouTube and we'll put it on um, the link on our Instagram. So be sure and take the survey because that will tell us who was in attendance today. Um, but you can also, like I said at the beginning, you can also message, message Kanai if you're on the call so that she can write down your name as well. Um, and then also, after we get the survey back and the attendance, uh, we will do a raffle and someone will win a gift card to a restaurant of our choosing. <laughs> and then um, it'll be like, it'll be a taco themed restaurant. So, and then next week's topic, um, we are going to be talking about tacos with a side of, let's talk about side hustles. So we'll be doing that next week. So please tune in again next week on Tuesday at 1.30 and we'll send out the Zoom invite and all that um, on Instagram and through email. So if there's no more questions. Thank you so much to Naomi. Thank you to Kanai. And thank you all for being on the call and joining in. We look forward to seeing y'all next week. Bye. Bye. Thank you.